many of you are aware of this verse, you shall have no other gods before me, and it goes right in line with the first and greatest commandment, which is you shall love your God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. The reason why we have so many health issues in America is because we are trusting in man and even in the doctrines of fallen angels to heal us. Well, only one is our healer, and that is the one who created us and everything in this earth. Many proclaiming Christians try to say that you can mix the unholy with the holy by continually trusting in modern-day medicine and doctors, yet asking the Father for their healing. All diseases are spiritual. They come from curses, and they come from transgression of God's law. Now, in the New Testament, the Messiah says that some people are actually given diseases and such so that the works of God can be declared in them. While I don't believe this negates that people do receive curses, I do believe that it is God's will to heal. Yet some people try to make the excuse that God's will sometimes isn't to heal. But my question for you is, is it not God's will to heal, but rather your lack of faith concerning his healing? Is this why you continue to go to doctors like King Asa did in 2 Chronicles, where he went to the physicians before he went to God, and therefore he died? This has happened to many, many Christians, especially in the last past three years. The reason why people are dying is because they are choosing sorcery over the truth of God's healing. There is an agenda concerning this. The Bible speaks very clearly about how one third and even two thirds of the earth will die. This is because the lack of trust in God. There are demons working in the medical industry and their plan is to keep you sick. Their plan is also to kill you if they can't just keep you sick. So how did we get here in the first place in the American system? Let's start with this guy. This is Rockefeller, the original oil tycoon, the businessman that decided that he would capitalize on the modern medical system. Before Rockefeller, America was actually using natural medicine and homeopathic remedies. These remedies are still used all around the world. And this is what God gave us to heal. In 1910, the Rockefeller Foundation, along with the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching in New York City, helped to fund the Flexner Report of 1910, which was authored by a man named Abraham Flexner. Flexner was commissioned by the Council on Medical Education, which was created by the American Medical Association. Flexner concluded that these natural healing modalities were unscientific quackery. His report also concluded that there were too many medical schools as well as too many doctors in America and called for the standardization of medical education. This would lead to the American Medical Association being the only entity that can approve medical school licensure in America, thus creating a monopoly. After its publication, Congress implemented changes based on Flexner's recommendations which led to modern allopathic medicine becoming the standard despite the quite barbaric methods of the time. Rockefeller worked with Andrew Carnegie to provide funding for medical schools across the country. This was through the condition that they would only teach allopathic medicine and they were offered grants from Rockefeller's petroleum monopoly to help system remove any mention of plant-based natural treatments along with the teachings on nutrition and diet from the medical education curricula. Through Rockefeller's influence, homeopathic and natural medicines were quickly discredited and demonized through the targeted media campaigns. Not only did Rockefeller implement these systematic changes, he also helped fund the American Cancer Society. Did you know that under federal law, it is actually illegal to utilize any modality other than chemotherapy, radiation, or surgery in the treatment of cancer? It's easy to see why if you follow the money, considering that the average cost of cancer treatment in the United States is a minimum of $150,000. When God has given you every single herb and plant for you to heal, why would anyone make money off of that? You can literally go out into your backyard and use dandelions for tea and for healing. But what do they call dandelions? Weeds. So here we have what's called the Hippocratic Oath, which is a swear to the gods of medicine. It goes, I swear by Apollo the physician, by Eclepius, by health, by panacea, and by all the gods and goddesses, making them my witnesses that I will carry out according to my ability and judgment this oath and this indenture. So this is the oath that many doctors have to take to swear and to be a doctor. Have you ever asked yourself why they are swearing allegiance to gods that supposedly do not exist? Do these doctors even understand what they are swearing to? 
No, many of them don't, and neither does the general population. Here is a list of the health deities that you can actually find pretty well on the internet. So a health deity is a god or goddess in mythology or religion associated with health, healing, and well-being. They may also be related to childbirth or mother goddesses. They are a common feature of polytheistic religions. So those of you who say that you don't need God to heal, you don't believe in God, etc., why are you partaking in the medical system that swears allegiance to polytheistic gods? So let's go over the health deities, the first one being Eclepius. Eclepius is the son of Apollo and Coronis, or Asinoe, or Apollo alone. He represents the healing aspect of the medical arts. One of his daughters is Hygieia, or health, which is where we get the modern words hygiene and health from. He is associated with Imhotep, which is why you see a lot of the people that partake in that belief system, they are into natural healing. This is where we get one of the modern medical symbols, which is called the Rod of Eclepius. It is a snake entwined staff. Now the interesting thing is Eclepius was actually killed by his grandfather Zeus with a lightning bolt because not enough people were passing onto the underworld due to his healing skills. Since when do you know God the Father to ever wish for anyone to die? Isn't this how the modern medical system some acts and the people that support it. Bill Gates literally said there were too many people in the world and that he wanted to reduce the population. Another goddess mentioned in the Hippocratic Oath is Panacea. Panacea was the goddess of universal remedy and the daughter of Eclepius and Apione. Panacea is associated with the universal remedy or the cure-all. As many of us know, they are going to be introducing a chip that is going to be a quote-unquote cure-all for all disease. Through the 18th and 19th centuries, many patent medicines were claimed to be panaceas and they became very big business. The word has acquired connotations of snake oil and quackery. One of the most popular of the pantheon of Greek gods is Hermes. He was the messenger god and known for carrying a staff called the caduceus. The caduceus included a staff with two snakes topped off with a set of wings. Just to let you know, Hermes was also the god associated with commerce, eloquence, alchemy, thievery, and lying. Does that sound like the qualities of a god you want to worship? Just as notable, does this sound like the modern medical industry? Now, I know many of you recognize this symbol because many modern medical institutions still use it to this day. As you can see, we have the World Health Organization that uses the staff of Eclepius, and then we have the pharmaceutical symbol of the Caduceus. We also have the he, she, goat demon, the Balfamet, with the staff of Hermes on his belly. If you think this is a coincidence, I can guarantee you it is not.